Hey guys, so I am finally getting around to filming my Q&A video. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this posted, but life on trail is crazy. So a few updates on where I am, because I know that seems to be the most popular question is, are my videos delayed or are they in real time? And my videos are delayed, so I am actually currently very cold right now because I'm very, very, very far up north. And so it is chilly up here right now, but, um, I am not in danger of not getting to Katahdin before um, the park closes. So thank you to everyone who's been concerned about that, but I don't think it'll be an issue. So Billy the Greek also asked me about my Trail Days experience. And so at Trail Days, I um, was in Hampton, Tennessee. And so I rode into Trail Days with Bob Peoples, the legendary Bob, uh, into Trail Days. He took me to Damascus. And then after Trail Days, my mom took me back to Hampton. So I didn't miss any miles there. Okay, and then Martha Baker asked me how I prepped for the trail, and I did do shakedown hikes before um, starting the AT, and I was doing some yoga and stuff like that, but I think more than any physical preparation I did for the trail, the most important um, thing I did was mentally preparing for the trail, and so I did that by um, reading Appalachian Trials by Zach Davis, which is a fantastic resource that really helps you um, mentally prepare yourself for hiking almost 2,200 miles. And so one of the biggest um, things that I've done has helped me get through this is I set many sub goals. And so um, when I, that was especially important when I was in Virginia because um, Virginia is such a long state, you're not having the mile marker of hitting another state line. And so it's important to be like, okay, I'm excited for the Virginia state line. I'm excited for Damascus. I'm excited for Grayson Highland State Park. I'm excited for McAfee's Knob. I'm excited for the Shenandoahs and then all the mile markers in there too. It also just helps keep your mental sanity. And then after you get out of Virginia, it's fantastic because you're hitting so many state lines. You just really, you start to feel like you're actually are progressing. And so that's been really exciting. Okay, Adrian Ridgewell asked um, about my clothing update and that is uh, interesting. So, for the majority of the trail, I've been wearing the blue, light blue teal shirt that my mom made me, she sewed that for me, with yoga pants. But for a brief stint, for maybe three or 400 miles, something like that, I did wear a green hiking dress that I loved that my mom got me at Marshall's, I believe. It was really inexpensive, only about $10. Cold, y'all. Um, so my mom got me that dress and I loved wearing it for some of the hotter month. Well, for just a hot stint, it was nice to have it. Um, I also got asked if I get hot since I hike in long sleeves and long pants. And honestly, I don't really get that hot. Um, I think being from Texas, I just have a higher heat tolerance than some people. And also I really appreciate the sun protection and protection from briars and um, bugs. It's really nice to just have that clothing barrier. And also, so many of y'all have been really great to ask if um, I have any family in Houston that y'all can be praying for, and I do. So thank you very much for um, lifting them up. Okay, and then Julian A asked if I have a hiking dress, or a town dress, and I did for a while have a dress that I bought in Waynesboro, Virginia, and I would wear it when I was in town when I was doing laundry. So I bought it in Waynesboro, and I kept it all the way up until Pauling, New York. And it was really nice just to have a cotton dress that I could throw on when I was in town, but I decided to stop carrying it in Pauling because I really wanted to get my base weight even lower. So I actually dropped from like, my nine pound base weight to probably close to a seven pound base weight because I got rid of that. Uh, I got rid of my ground sheet. So I decided to send it home just to save a couple ounces and my tent has been working spectacular um, without my ground sheet. So I don't miss having that. I currently do not have a town dress and so it is kind of hard because I have to figure out um, I have to just find clothes when I'm in town to wear while I'm doing laundry. So right now I'm borrowing um, an outfit from a friend who is in the area. Uh, that way I could just wash everything I own and wear some of her clothes, which is really nice because they're cotton and so I feel like a, a normal person and not a hiker. Okay, so John from Live For Wild 
Uh, he asked me what kind of coat I'm wearing and I wear the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer jacket that I really like. It's a great jacket. It's really warm um, and it's ultra light, so light. I think it weighs maybe five or six ounces, but it is an expensive jacket and if I had to do it over again or if I were making recommendations to someone, I think I would probably recommend that they buy an REI puffy or just whatever kind of puffy jacket they can find on sale because in the end, um, the ounces, I don't know that they actually matter that much and you're saving so much money, it's really gonna help your um, budget when you're on trail. Then also, since it's getting colder, I added this um, REI fleece to my clothing bag and it's been really nice to have that for the layers. And then I added another REI base layer. It's kind of like a, a wool long sleeve shirt that I use when, at night when I'm sleeping. And I had the uh, I had the Patagonia Ghost Whisper jacket. It's a wind jacket, but honestly, it's not great for the trail, I feel like, because it's not waterproof at all. And if it's cold enough that I need a jacket, then that's not warm enough. And so I bought a rain jacket the other day. Um, and that was a lifesaver. Um, now that I'm up north, it's just the weather is a lot harsher. And I needed an actual rain jacket, not just my rain poncho. So I traded in my rain poncho and got a pack cover that I found in a hiker box. And I'm using that in conjunction with my rain jacket. Okay, so Julian also asked me um, how much a typical day's worth of food weighs, and I feel like most of the time my food uh, for one day weighs anywhere between one and two pounds, depending on what I'm eating. And so typically I only carry three or four days worth of food at a time. So my food bag weighs probably anywhere from six to eight pounds um, at any given time. And I try not to carry anything more than that just because it's so, so, so heavy. So the AT, there are enough towns to where you never have to carry more than four days worth of food unless you choose to do so. So Julian also asked, what kind of things do I have my parents mail me as opposed to what I get in town? And the only things that I really have my parents mail me are things that I don't have access to on, in trail towns and that's stuff like Ninksha Red, Nitro, which are the um, energy and health supplement drinks that I like. They, I also have them send me bone broth and essential oils and a green powder drink that I like. And that's just because I, I don't have access to those things in towns and they're really important to me. They also send me my toothpaste and sunscreen and bug spray but once again those are things that I could find in towns but I like to use um, natural organic ones and so I can't find those ones in towns okay and then 15 more asked how is my do-it-yourself pack doing so if you um, have been keeping up with my journey you might know that my aunt and I actually made my backpack myself it's the Ray Hardeen and I love it that it is fantastic it is my favorite piece of gear my top three favorite pieces of gear are my backpack, my shirt that my mom made me, and Gut Hooks, the app, because they are just irreplaceable. I use them all. I depend on them every single day. And so my backpack has been holding up great, no holes, no tears, really doesn't show any signs of wear on it at all, and it's machine washable, so it doesn't even smell bad. The With my backpack, it also, it makes sure that I keep it light because since there's no hip belt, if I carry anything over 20 pounds, I really start to feel it in my shoulders and it's doable, but it's not comfortable. So I try really hard to never have more than 20, 21 pounds. Um, my goal weight with food and water is 17 or 18. And for the most part, I've been able to, able to maintain that. There's just, sometimes if I'm leaving a town, I'll have 20 pounds, but that's because I'm carrying an onion or a bell pepper. That way I can have a fancy dinner first night back out on trail. Okay, and then a lot of y'all have asked me about triple crowning, if I want a triple crown. I have definitely fallen in love with long distance hiking, and if I am able to, I would love to do the PCT and the CDT eventually. Okay, and then Julian A asked, how often has my body needed a zero versus how many zeros do I take for fun? And honestly, every zero I have taken has been out of necessity for the most part. 
Um, so it's either I need to take a zero due to weather or due to I am just absolutely exhausted or I have chores that need to get done like laundry resupply and I can't get it done that day or also I've taken zeros just for the sake of YouTube before because it's hard to keep videos edited and updated and finding strong Wi-Fi and so if I'm able to find good Wi-Fi and I'm worn out I'm gonna take a zero that way I can get my videos up for y'all okay and then a newer side of me asked have I seen children on trail and that has been wonderful I have seen a lot of kids on um, both day hiking weekend hiking even through hiking so Ellie on the AT is actually a one-year-old baby and she's out here doing a flip-flop hike with her parents and that is so neat that they're carrying their one-year-old on a through hike because what wonderful memories that they're building is her parents and she probably won't remember it but I think that the a love for nature is going to be instilled in her from being exposed to God's beauty at such a young age and getting to live outside in it so they have a really neat unique journey and if you want to follow them they are on Instagram um, their handle is Ellie on the AT so a newer side of me also asked what is the biggest challenge been on my trek and definitely my biggest challenge has been my feet so if you've been watching my videos I have had some serious foot issues and that really um, that's hard it's hard because it's really difficult when you are not in control of something that you feel like you should be able to be in control of and so to not be able to control um, how your feet are feeling and to want to hike and to want to be able to do big mile days and to feel like you have the endurance to do it but not the foot um, health to do it that's really frustrating and so if my mom hadn't come out and helped nurse my feet back to health I honestly don't think I would still be out here because my feet were in shambles and so I am very grateful to my parents that they are so invested in seeing me complete my through hike because if not for them this would not be possible. So I'm very grateful for them. That was definitely my biggest challenge was foot pain and it is on the upswing. So my arches are finally starting to not hurt. I've been using Panaway and Copaiba essential oil every day, three or four times a day and also rubbing out the bottoms of my arches with a ping pong ball. And I think those things combined with new shoes and new insoles has really, really helped. Okay, so he also asked if I was prepared to face that challenge and I that's an interesting question I don't know how I would answer it um, I guess I was prepared because I had an incredibly supportive family who was able to come out and help me um, I think an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure I don't know what I could have done to have prevented my foot um, issues but I that probably would have been best. Okay. On Instagram, Maria Hedrick asked, how are the mosquitoes? And mosquitoes have been, they were an issue earlier on on the trail, but mosquitoes tend to not really bite me that much, and so that's a blessing. But um, I know other people were really getting swarmed by mosquitoes at different points. And she, and she also asked if I've ever genuinely felt scared. And I mean, there have definitely been a few times when I have felt really scared, but um, I'm trying to think of a specific time. Well, I saw a bear in Pennsylvania and this um, didn't make the video because I was so scared, but um, I was by myself hiking, not Pennsylvania, I was in New Jersey, sorry. But um, I was by myself hiking and the bear was digging for grubs in a log about 15 feet up the trail and um, I was scared to just walk right past him because I've always heard to never turn your back on a wild animal because um you know he might chase you I don't know and so I was very nervous and someone actually um, I stayed with some family friends back in Pennsylvania and they gave me um, a whistle and so I pulled that whistle out of my fanny pack and I just started blowing it and trying to make a lot of noise and the bear was not afraid of me and so I that really scared me because he looked up when he heard the whistle and looked at me but then just went right back for digging for grubs and so I was really kind of afraid um, but I did not know what to do and so I stood there and just kept blowing the whistle and praying and then a helicopter flew overhead and that scared him and he ran away. And so I wish that I had been able to capture that on video because it was such a clear shot but I was genuinely afraid and so my one 
thought was, I hope this bear just walks away. And then in terms of have people ever made me feel uncomfortable, there have been a couple times when um, I was a little afraid. There was a moment in, it was after Harper's Ferry. Um, gosh, I don't know what state I was in, but somewhere after Harper's, maybe in PA in Pennsylvania. Um, but we were at camp one night and this kind of just drifter guy wandered in right at right at dusk and just wanted to hang out. And thankfully I wasn't camping alone. I was with You're a few welcome. other people, but that was a little um, intimidating, a little strange. And then uh, I've had a couple hitches that were a little bizarre, but I mean, in the end, everything worked out, so. So Brittany Easter and Sydney Betzel both asked me what has been my favorite view and that is the hardest question because I have seen some really spectacular views especially since getting farther north but um, some of my favorites in the south were definitely Grayson Highland State Park in Virginia, Charlie's Bunyan in the Smoky Mountains, I loved the Rhone Highlands in Tennessee, those were all just really special beautiful places. Oh and um, Max Patch in Tennessee, I believe. It's gorgeous. Okay, and then my best friend Mackenzie asked me, what are the poles for the trekking poles? So the trekking poles um, help take the weight off my uh, knees and feet and transfer it to the poles via my arms. And so they're an essential piece of gear because when they broke for a while, it was really painful and hard to not have them. I fell more than I think I would have fallen and my knees started aching. So um, the trail, I'm still loving through hiking. I, li I love just waking up every day outside in nature, going to bed surrounded by trees, walking all day, the oxygen. Um, I recently started hiking, well, a few hundred miles ago, I started hiking with a new group of people and they are just wonderful. I'm having a lot of laughs on, on trail and I'm really enjoying um, a good community of people while I'm out here. So thank you so much for watching guys. Thank you for being so supportive of this entire journey. Um, I love reading y'all's comments and your encouragement. It really means a lot to me, especially on the hard days. It's nice to know that um, I have people in my corner cheering for me. So thank you very much. I appreciate y'all taking time to watch and share the videos and comment on the videos. So thank you so much. If you have any other questions, I would love to do another Q&A video with you um, and I think that now that I've gotten some things cleared up on my phone and figured out some, I had some technical difficulties that I got cleared up and now that those issues are solved, I think I could definitely get a Q&A video up a lot sooner than this one was posted. So let me know what questions you have um, and again, thank you so much for watching. I'm excited to continue this journey with y'all and make it to Katahdin soon.